Welcome back to another episode of The Debrief. It's a few days late, but what does it matter? Scheduling errors happen sometimes. Uh, my name's Tyler Norton from Plastic Weekly, and as always, joining me is John Bergman, uh, covering competitions for Climbing Magazine and Jim Climber and a lot of other stuff. And of course, he's also the author of High Drama, The Rise, Fall, and Rebirth of American Competition Climbing. Uh, you can buy it in the link below. Uh, today, we're talking about Kron, the final, as it turns out lead World Cup of the 2021 season and our first World Cup back since the Olympic dust has settled. Uh, that was kind of what John and I were talking about before we started recording was what it feels like to cover a World Cup again after the Olympics is over. Um, and for me, it's a little bit muddled because my life has restarted since the Olympics finished, right? Like lockdowns have, have lifted a little bit here. My job has restarted. And so my, my life has moved away from just thinking about competition climbing. So maybe my viewpoint is a little bit uh, uh, um, uh, uh, twinged in that direction. But John, how has it felt for for you on your end? Like, I mean, you've been cranking out articles about climbers leading into the Olympics for like two years, dude. Is it quieted down? It, it has quieted down a little bit. It has felt weird as well. Um, I think partly because I was trying to explain this to you before we started recording. Um, the thing about the Olympics was... I mean, my my hope and your hope, of course, is that competition climbing becomes the biggest sport in the world, right? But it's it's not there yet. Um, and and yet during the Olympics, you had every outlet, mainstream outlet, big outlet, whatever you want to call it, whether NBC, Fox, ESPN, all, you know, all these the kind of the big the big names for sports coverage, especially here in the United States, they were all covering the Olympics, and most of them covered climbing at least somewhat to some degree but nonetheless they all it was just constant olympic coverage and so here we were talking about the olymp talking about climbing at the olympics writing about climbing at the olympics all that stuff so it's like we were aligned with what everybody every other outlet was talking about in the olympics everybody was talking about it and and now here in the states this is the opening weekend of of football um you know and tennis oh, right. has the u.s open and stuff so it's like all those outlets have gone back to covering the other sports and here we are covering climbing and we still love it but it's just it's it's different because it, it doesn't have kind of that synergy with every other outlet anymore um it feels like the spotlight has moved on kind of yeah a little bit i mean and or the, the circus big hope has is, left town <laughs> and the hope is that a lot of those fans that discovered climbing for the first time through the olympics stuck around and tuned into the world cup and we're not necessarily privy to all those those metrics, but we hope so. You know, I that was something I've been thinking about as we were coming into recording this. Was first, I was curious what the viewership numbers were going to be for this World Cup, and I, I I didn't actually look into it, so I won't talk on it. Um, but over the last month that we've been open, I haven't really gotten anybody coming into the gym curious about like, oh yeah, I saw this. Like nobody's name dropping the Olympics when they first walk into the gym, right? But I will still every couple of weeks get somebody being like, yeah, I just saw Free Solo. And that's two years removed. So I I feel like I I was pretty bearish on what kind of effect the Olympics would have on climbing. A lot of people, I always felt that people were overhyping the effect it would have on climbing gyms. Um, but even so, I thought there would be like some kind of increase. And I'm a little bit sad to say that I haven't seen anything. Now, like in Canada, we didn't have a medalist like you guys did. Certainly not a gold medalist. So maybe there's an effect in spain and slovenia maybe there's a bunch of people that 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 national identity around the sport is really crystallizing that would be cool but out here yeah it's uh it does feel like the the like the circus has has left town is the best way to put it everybody packed up it's gone we'll see them in three years and uh yeah so it might it might be back to uh <laughs> this very quiet podcast again with uh, just total nerds watching. So hi, hi everybody, by the way. We appreciate every one of them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Anyway, let's let's talk about uh, let's talk about Kron, which it wasn't supposed to be the final lead World Cup of the season, but uh, due to COVID cancellations yeah. for not just the Chinese World Cups, we just found out the uh, Jakarta Speed World Cup is canceled, which is a huge shame. Uh, but anyway, this season is, uh, is a short one with only five events. It ended in Kron, and uh, that ended up being... Uh, an auspicious place to finish given the storyline. So John, I'll let you take it away. What's what's the headline from uh, from this event? The big headline to me is that this is related to what we were just talking about with the Olympics. Four weeks ago, Yanya Garnbret wowed and won over the the new fans, the casual fans, whatever however you want to describe the the 
core Olympic viewership. Um, they all, they all kind of learned for the first time who Yanya Garmert was. She won them over. I think this comp at Kron, Yanya kind of wowed and won over those of us hardcore fans, you know, the, the people in the Discord, all of those of us that tune in to every, um, every comp of the, every World Cup. This was, this was Yanya, um, I don't know. I don't want to say she. It felt like she was like doing it for us, but it just felt like, like we said, it's like this was speaking to a a, a little different viewer, kind of the diehard viewer. Um, we knew going into the Olympics that it was that it was funky in every way, right? The format, the timing, um, the narrative of it was going to decide who was the best. Uh, it was all weird, and yet Yanya. I, I think the Olympics accomplished its goal, which was to sport to a lot of new people. And I think a, a big part of that was these new people saw Yanya and they realized her, wow, this is somebody really special, really great that I should, I should know about her because this is the type of athlete that I'll be telling my kids or my grandkids about perhaps. Um, and, and yet for those of us, it's like, we already know, we already knew Yanya was phenomenal. We didn't need the Olympics to prove that. Mm -hmm. um, but what really puts a big stamp on that, I think, was that she came, uh, she, she participated in Kron, which she didn't have to, of course. A lot of other Olympians did not take part in this. And on top of that, she apparently wasn't really training for it. I mean, we don't know like the degree to which she was not training, but Matt Groom said on the broadcast that she certainly, I, I don't think her training was aligned for anything past the Olympics, right? Yeah, I, I doubt she's actually doing any training. I think that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. and so, and and yet she she wins this. With it, she wins the lead overall season. Um, it's, it's almost like, like I said, the Olympics were kind of for the casual fan, not to say we didn't enjoy it as well, but um, this was this was kind of what um, this felt like it was for us. Can I be honest that I'm kind of mad that she didn't realize that she could have won the season or like that she did win the season? Like, I feel <laughs> I feel like if you're the, the great, like the greatest climber, competitive climber of all time, you might have an eye on like what you can achieve and what can be done from from these comps and it kind of i felt it very weird that she that that caught her off guard that she won the season like i feel like you would have done that math in advance and said oh we can actually do this wouldn't that be a cool accomplishment to tack on top of the olympics and you know earn your like what was her fourth I think, yeah her fourth lead uh overall season so i'm kind of i'm like that was like wait what you you don't understand that you could have done that at this event sweep the season with like the lowest investment in the number of comps that you've climbed in probably i couldn't find anybody in in like recent uh in recent uh female lead history at least to to win a season with so few but um but anyway that's that's my headline very similar to yours but it's just that you know uh she um uh, what's the word? She she really just like kind of helped cement her reputation among anybody that carried over from the Olympics. They're like, oh yeah, if there is anyone that watched the Olympics and then decided I'm gonna I'm gonna watch some comp climbing. I thought that was really cool. She carried that storyline over, and it it was impressive, and it was a nice thing to see uh, because it, it may not have been that way if the the men's field had uh, had turned out differently. People might have watched the Kron men's lead World Cup and been like, who the fuck are all these people? Like, I don't recognize like any of these names from the Olympics. Where are all the good climbers? Yeah. Um, so that was that was a, a really cool. And again, yeah, the fact that, that, you know, only climbing in three lead World Cups this season wins all three of them and gets a season, uh, a season, overall season out of it um is so impressive and and so cool like the closest i could find was i think 2010 um uh, uh kim jane in the first event kim jane uh the qualifiers were were both i think fairly easy for the first event of 2010 and she fell really low on the second qualifier whereas like everybody else topped so Kim Jean, not somebody that was a superstar just yet. All of her success would come later. She had a really bad start to the season. And then the next four or five events, she wins 
all five of them or all four of them in a row and takes her first season championship basically and that's kind of the closest i could find to a satisfying story where it's like everybody move out of the way yanni garbrett's here and she only accepts wins um yeah i thought that was such a uh, such a great story and it was i'm glad we had it because the men's scene was was relatively like uh, lacking in terms of storylines unfortunately it, it sets up some really interesting questions um, for the bouldering season, too. I, I, I don't know if you I'm wanna... afraid we might not answer, unfortunately. But... Yeah, I, I was trying to think this, though. I, <laughs> what, what, we're going to have to make up a term here. We could, we could make up the term right now. What would you call it if there was an athlete who wins a lead overall season, a bouldering overall season, and an Olympic gold medal? Like the, I don't know the golden season or something. I y- there's no there's mm. no term for it. It's unprecedented. Like you, it might not you know this might not be the year that we see it. But if the Olympics, um, if climbing stays in the Olympics, hopefully for decades and decades, I think we might see you know somebody who wins bouldering and gets an Olympic gold medal. Maybe they win. Um, I, I I don't know. There's just all these sure. scenarios that that we can think about. Um, Yanya is obviously the the person that has come closest to that because no, we haven't had an Olympics prior to this year. Well, I guess the, the most practical trio would be like in that, in the same Olympic season, you win a world cup and then you win the season and then you win the Olympics as well. I feel like would be the, like the most practical one. Cause I don't know how many people would feasibly win both uh, like bouldering and lead for uh, the season. But the one that's, and this is kind of in the same vein of like what, you know, it's unfortunate that we're probably not going to see any more Yanya this season is that this 2021 is probably the only time in history we'll ever see an Olympic games and a climbing world championship in the same year. And Yanya could just judging by the form we saw in Kron, not to mention at the Olympics, she could win an Olympic gold, one or multiple world championship golds, and win a lead season off of barely any comps if she bothered to show up to the world championships, which she's not. And this is kind of like also in that vein of argument of, you know, maybe it's not her goal to be the, you know, most winningest climber ever. Maybe she does have a, a, a far more like innocence not the right word but maybe a, a, a more you know uh, a simple goal of just trying to be the best climber she can be and it's all about just the quality of the climbing but listen if you're in your form right now and you have the opportunity to win an olympic multiple world championships and even multiple seasons she could still win the bouldering world cup season this year if you're not going to this stuff like I, I, I don't want to push it too far because the Simone Biles conversation really amplified a lot of complexity about being an athlete. And sometimes you have to step back even when there's like, you know, big prizes on the line. So I'm not going that far. But if she is just going on vacation or something like that, I would desperately ask her to reconsider just force somebody to etch your name under the registration list for world championship. Cause dude, like what a season it could be if you could knock out all of those things in one year, like it, it would probably never yeah. be able to be recreated just because you're never going to have a world championship in the same year as an Olympics probably ever again. So I'm really sad. We're going to miss out on that, man. Yeah, me too. I mean, I love, I love the stats that come with the discussion of how, how great somebody is and, and medals and, and all that stuff. I, I think to go back to your other point, I can't speak for Yanya. I have no idea, but I do know in all the interviews I've read with her, um, she, whenever they say, why do you compete? How long are you going to compete? How, how long are you going to continue to compete? It, it, it's never about, she has never once to my, to anything I've read or, or watched on YouTube or whatever. She's never once brought up, uh, um, I don't know what you'd say, like a statistical accolade. Like okay. I want to, I want to do it until I get this many medals or this many win. It's always some iteration of I want to do it as long as I enjoy it, as long as I'm having fun. Sure. So it, it seems like, according to that, um, she is n- not the. I don't want to say she's not motivated by by all that other right. stuff because, like I said, I don't know. But it does seem like um, maybe the just the fact of pure enjoyment of the competition takes precedence over I want to do this accomplishment. I want to get the world championship the same year that I get the Olympics, the same year that I win the lead overall. That's not the type of goal that she expresses in interviews. Now, mm-hmm. whether or not maybe she keeps those private, maybe they are. I don't know. But it's just interesting. I feel like she's reached this, like, maybe if there's any caution of, like, well, I don't want to seem too cocky saying I, like, want to win these events. Like, if there's, if there's anybody that can pull it off, it is you, Yanya. So 
feel free to flex that muscle if you want. Start just calling, you know, start pointing to the outfield and telling us where you're going to bat the ball. Like now is the now is the time. You might not last forever, but yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. So so that's you know the headlines, and unfortunately, the the biggest winners are are pretty similar. If if you're going to talk about anybody other than Yanya, um, it's uh it it's it would really be for second and third place, which is actually exactly what I'm going to do because I don't really know what else to say about Yanya. But for my biggest winner is Stefano Gazolfi, and I'm probably going to take this back when we go to biggest loser as well, which is just like <laughs> classic classic debrief style of build them up and then knock them down. But yeah. I mean, he's been in this game for a very long time. Um, I think he is the same, exactly the same age as Adam Andre. I think they started competing in the same year in 2009, if I remember right. And he slowly built himself up. And uh, actually, he had an Instagram post where I think he summarized his career pretty easily. But he's somebody that, you know, has done extremely well in some seasons, but he's never managed to clinch the season gold. And you know, he came in and he seized the the diminished uh, uh, field for this year and put in some really incredible performances. Not this weekend, unfortunately, which we'll talk about later. But it is awesome to have him at the top of the lead podium. Um, it's been a great year for Italy all around, and I think uh, I think he should be extremely proud of that. Um, he did have a really great season, even if it didn't end the way he wanted it to necessarily. But yeah, I think my biggest winner is Stefano Gazzolfi. I'm excited to have him um, just that successful. Like you said, I, I think the end of the season probably wasn't ideal, but overall the season is a huge success for him. It's great because he's a charismatic personality. He's a he's a he's a an athlete, a, cli- a comp climber who who's very dialed in with, um, you know, all the social media and YouTube. And and I say that that might seem like people might hear that and be like, who cares? But I'm thinking like, no, that's how. That's how like younger fans, newer fans, they're going to discover this sport, right? They're going to like find people like Stefano or maybe like a Magnus Mitbo or somebody like these comp yeah. climbers or former comp climbers who have big social media presence, YouTube presence, all of that. And so it's just wonderful. Yeah, it's great for for the sport that Stefano um, did so well. And, and you know, he's he I, I think he'll continue to grow the sport. I think he'll play a big part in that as much as an athlete can. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and, and it's great too. Um, with I'm trying to think, you know, he, yeah, he didn't go to the Olympics, so mm-hmm. this was a nice. Um, uh, I don't know what you'd say. We we were talking earlier in debriefs that feel like they were a long, long time ago. We were talking <laughs> about the the comeback of Sean Bailey, right? About yeah. how he didn't he didn't make the Olympics, and then he made the most of it. Um, kind of fires back, has an awesome. Uh, World Cup circuit year here in 2021. We have to say the same thing now about Stefano, right? Because that's it's kind of like that similar template of okay, you don't you don't make the Olympics. Totally different circumstances than Sean Bailey. You know, Italy had the the tripartite um, uh, selection and all that stuff. But nonetheless, like there's this crushing blow of you're not going to get to go to the Olympics. How, you know, how do you pick yourself up after that happens? How do you make the most of it? How do you make lemonade? out of the lemons and Stefano's, you know, I mean, gosh, he won the season. So mm-hmm. that's just can't get any better than that. Yeah. And the same thing with Sean, it'll be interesting to see what happens next year. Ideally when people are, are coming back ideally in some level of prime form, Stefano's not that much older than Sean, I guess, but he is closer to what might be kind of like an acceptable retirement age. And this seems like it could be the kind of achievement that people say, you know what, I'll end it on that high note. Right. Um, you know, I win, win the gold season after like, what, 12 years of competing in World Cups. Like maybe I'll just call it and go outside and uh, let that be the focus. But if he does choose to come back, it would be an awful lot of fun. Because like you said, he is the kind of person that could could be built into a bit of a celebrity and get a bit of attention. And he's a charismatic guy. I like I like watching him, uh, uh, watching him talk about his climbing, especially. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, he is a scary guy for us comp fans because he has this whole <laughs> other uh, very successful side of his career with his outdoor um, uh, attempt, yeah. uh, his outdoor uh, ascents. You know, it's not like somebody like an Akio or somebody who you're like, gosh, what are they? You know, she doesn't have as much of an outdoor pedigree. Mm-hmm. What you know, this would be a, a significant transition for somebody like Akio, 
of course, I'm sure she could do it. But like Stefano, it's like he's already keeps sort of one foot in each pond. He's pretty 50 50. Like, you know, he is. Yeah. Yeah. Which and the reason I said it's scary for us comp fans is because it's like it, it, it just that makes it seem kind of more likely that he could just be like, yeah, I'm you know done with comps. I'm you know, I've had a lot of success on these outdoor ascents. Yeah. Um, which I'll know, be honest, than- at his age, I don't really mind. Like when when you hit 28 and and your best achievement was in a season where half of the guys couldn't show up. Like it doesn't like I'm OK if he walks away now at 28. Right. Like that's I can live with that. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, what, it's, uh, it's just uh, it's it's very likely he could. I, I don't have any insight, but I hope he doesn't. But yeah, who knows? yeah, yeah. Uh, what did what did you think for biggest winner aside from uh, yeah. Yanya? Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> all my notes. It's just Yanya. Yan. No, um, I wrote down Masahiro Higuchi. Yeah, and the reason I wrote his name down kind of interesting. He's 29 years old, so he's another one who's who's a little older. Um, this, he, he wins this event actually pretty dominant. He won semis and then, and then won, um, won finals. The finals, he was like six holds higher than anybody else or something like that. I, I if I remember correctly, I actually uh, have the results. I know I was flashing them on the screen before. Cause I realized I had the cron results from two years ago, still loaded in this. So, so I had to, I had to edit them up, but yeah, let me, let me throw the men's results up here yeah. while, uh, while you're talking about it. Um, but, uh, right, yeah. So just, just, let's see, does it. Sorry, is this, this no? This is what's going on here. Why is it not? Uh, it's not resizing. It's bugging out. It's okay. Is it bugging um, out? <laughs> anyway, rock and roll, so, man. Just talk about so, Masahiro. Yes. Yeah, so the the reason I put his name on here. It, so you look at his career results or his kind of recent years results. They're not bad by any means. Um, I wrote down some of the highlights here. But he's he, not. He, he's not a tier one. Well, that's my Lead that's climber. my point. You know, he so ninth at Chamonix earlier this year, seventh at Villars, fourth at Innsbruck, uh, going back other years, tenth at Wujang in 2018, third at Kron in 2018. So he always seems to do well at Kron. Eleventh uh, at Jiamen in 2017, and yet the, the he's not. You're right. This I wrote this down. He's not one of the marquee names of Team Japan. Mm-hmm. Not that we would expect him to be with a a Kyo or a Miho or a Tomoa. Yeah. But even you think of kind of the other names, Kai Harada, Rei Sugimoto, Kokoro Fuji, Meichi Narasaki. Those are the names we kind of bring up a lot. We mm-hmm. we never kind of really bring up Masahiro's name. I don't want to say never, but certainly not often. Um, and and so this was just like a really cool um, a showing for him. And he just joins this long list of other great Japanese climbers, of course, um and and the fact that he's 29 years old he's a veteran of the circuit i was just happy for him it is it is kind of a shame that the the like uh japanese lead team gets so like uh such short shrift kind of because their bouldering team gets so much attention because they do seem to be more dominant in that discipline right but you go back and yeah we what was it like brian son is two years ago where where the the podium was swept by a bunch of Japanese climbers who would arguably be their B team. Yeah. Um, and, you know, even at an event like this, what was it like uh, Momoka Abe and Natsuki Tani and, and not just Masahiro, but uh, 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 who else was on there? Um, uh, uh, yeah. Ao, uh, Ao Yurikusa as well uh, in the final and Satoni Yoshida. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it feels like they maybe live in a bit of a shadow because their results aren't always as consistent as the bouldering team where, those people are in every event, right? Um, but they probably do deserve, you know, especially on the men's side where results fluctuate so much regardless of uh, of discipline. It's just the men's thing seems to be all over the place. But yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, um, and it was just the fact that he owned this comp. So, I mean, so he was tied for 16th in the qualies. So he was a little lower there. But like I said, to, to win semis and then to win finals very convincingly, mm-hmm. um, it's just... I remember as I was watching, I was just like, wow, like Masahiro, he just, I don't know, whatever, he, whatever he had for breakfast before this comp, it's just like, man, great stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Solid, solid showing. Did you have any predictions going into the men's final? Because that was something that, that, and this is, this might end up transitioning into a biggest loser, but it was a, a stunted field in the first place. I don't, were there any male Olympians that went to this event? I'm trying to, uh, sesh. I don't think there were uh, any male Olympians. I think it was only women Olympians that went. Um, I, I think you're right. I 
feel bad if, if I'm wrong. They, out, but, if I'm wrong, uh, they went out really early because yes, the celebrities yes. of the semifinals were not Olympic uh, contenders. So right. coming into this final, like, yeah, just putting this up here again. And this this kind of, first of all, there's some names that you might not see very often. And then there's a few names where you're like, oh, yeah, that's an up and coming climber like uh, Luca, for instance. And there's a couple names here that might make you think that it's like four or five years ago when you see Doman Skofic and like Sebastian Helenke. You're like, wait, what's what what's happening here? Um, did you have predictions going into that field? Because I honestly had nothing. I know some people in the chat were saying like, oh, this is Doman's time to shine and come back. But I personally, like, I mean, if he's really working that hard at that gym, I, I think he was lucky to get in finals, frankly. But I mean, did what did you think going into that round? I, I didn't, I was kind of like you. I, I did not have any predictions or particular expectations. I was very curious to see going into the comp itself, not necessarily going into the finals, but going mm. into the comp itself, I was very curious to see how, how Sean Bailey was going to do, how he was yeah. going to close out his season. Um, that was kind of, he was at the forefront of my mind just because we've talked about him so much on this, the debrief these years. But, but that was just kind of like this vague curiosity. Uh, other than that, yeah, no, no real predictions or expectations for anybody to do. Um, which is kind of, it's funny because I remember a year ago we were saying, Hey, it's going to be really interesting. These world cups that happen after the Olympics, mm -hmm. we kind of predicted that these were going to be a little funky. And we were like, I wonder who's going to show up. Well, probably none of the Olympians will show up. And here we are. And, very few of the Olympians showed up in the case of the men. Yeah. None. So in, um, in general, I think my expectations were actually kind of um, exceeded in terms of the kind of field that we got at all the world cups through the season. Like I was really kind of afraid that when it got close to the Olympics and then after it would be like pretty dead. Um, but we fortunately still had some pretty somewhat consistent names, particularly on the women's side and men's too. Although again, this comp was an outlier where we saw a bunch of the, 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 the big names for the men's lead just drop off right at the last minute somehow. Um, but I think overall, I actually, it, it could have been way worse, which is I'm, I'm, I'm glad there was like a bit of a, a line of story that, that kept through the season, even if people like Andra were in and out and, and Yanya were in and out. It's still like, it still felt substantial enough for the most part maybe barring this event but yeah. well i think the the man who did the most was alberto right he was like the yeah last, yeah the last guy uh at the comp before the, the last olympian in the uh yeah. in the comp before before the olympics i yeah. and i remember we were saying we were like this is probably a mistake the commentators were saying he looks tired yeah. he had to be exhausted from the grind and then he shuts us all up by winning a gold medal so yeah, yeah. yeah. it all works it all works, it all works. um yeah. what, what did you think about biggest loser from this event well, do you want to, I have a couple other winners. Do you want to go okay, through? Okay, yeah, let's do it. Cause there's only two. It's uh, like, we're, <laughs> we're, we're going to yeah. finish this show in less than 30 <laughs> minutes. If we keep up this pace, <laughs> Jesus, why do we take so long with guests? Um, <laughs> I got two, I got two other winners. Um, maybe if I'll say one and you toss out one. And if, if your one isn't mine, then I'll say my other one, but, uh, yeah, Jorg Verhoeven, like, sure. So 36 years old, um, it's been doing big outdoor stuff for a couple years. I usually have to, I, I usually ask Eddie whether or not somebody is retired, Eddie Falk. I have to right. like say, Eddie, is this person, have you heard anything? Is this person? So I, I just, I had not asked Eddie about York. I just assumed that York was retired. Yeah, um, and, and I think it sounds like Matt groom on commentary assumed that as well. Um, I looked at the results. So he, 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 his most recent World Cup was 2018, which mm -hmm. granted was not as that long ago. Yeah, but Actually, what did, like what what did he place in that event? That's, though? So yeah, the, <laughs> the thing is though, if you if you want to go back to his, I mean, I think of him as like a legend, and if you want to go back to the kind of the reason we think of him that way, it's 2012, 2013, 2014. Mm -hmm. um, he was he was doing really really well. I he got second at a Boulder World Cup in Toronto in 2013. I thought actually you might have been there. I, I, I wasn't there. I wasn't at that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, but he, so, but to your question, you know, most recently 2018, he was 32nd in Vilar. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was 34th at Chamonix in 2018. So that's kind of where he was during his final season or seasons. And yet this competition, he finishes 17th, which yeah. is like way higher than any of his more recent years. And, and I mean, he looked great. He, gosh, 17, you're only, you know, uh, a handful of slots away from, possibly making finals it was just 
Yeah, it's great. I don't know his. I don't know the personal circumstances, but all things being equal, I kind of wonder if he wishes he had got back into the circuit earlier this year. If he's like, Jesus, I could have got seventeenth and maybe better when you know when the field was diminished. Like, could have gone out on a, a high note. But you, you it was funny. You mentioned those particular years. What did you say? 2012, 2013 were like his bouldering peaks. Twenty two. 12, 13, and 14 were not necessarily just bouldering, but just like the years when you're scanning his results where he was really um, kind of seemed to have some of his best results. But he had he had good results kind of peppered throughout other years as well. I don't want to act like he was right. Only yeah, good I was just going to say like because he won the World Cup season. I'm pretty sure it was like 2008 or nine or something like that. Like go. So yeah. go back to when we were just talking about Stefano and Adam when they started the scene. Yeah. That was like Jorg's lead peak was was like 12 13 years ago so yeah it might have been i should have said like 2012 like and earlier sure <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah you're right like he was definitely a big name in the um i don't know what you'd call those <laughs> i don't know how you label those years the, these, I, these. yeah I, that's a, that's a f- other fun conversation is is labeling different eras i kind of think yeah. of that as the just like the early ifsc years um yeah yeah so, and, which i don't know if that was a huge um, difference for the athletes themselves, but just in terms of historical record keeping, things really fall apart before that 2007 season. Um, it becomes way harder to get information. So to me, that's like the the beginning of the modern era is like 2007, 2008, 2009 um, yeah. in my head, because that's where for the most part, all the all the records are like still intact. Um, yeah, and I, I feel like that's kind of me. 2007, eight, that's probably a little early, but by like 2010, 11, that's when we start to have more video footage of the competitions readily available. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, every once in a while you'll find a, a comp from like 1990 on YouTube or something, or clips, clips and whatnot, yeah. but it really feels like inevitably on um, Udo's channel, probably. Right. But, yeah. right. but it feels like, um, right around the time, honestly, that Jorg was starting to rock and roll. Like we were saying, that's kind of when you start to see live streams popping up on YouTube that you can go back and watch the full replay and stuff like that. Yeah. I can't remember what year that was, but I think the IFSC was like 2012 or 2013. It was like kind of every comp at that point, but the couple of years before it was only a handful sort of thing. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, And it's funny to go back and watch them now because of the video quality. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the yeah, video quality was quite different uh, yeah. in 2012, 13. Yeah, I want to get a I want to get a top 30 uh, tattoo somewhere on my body. That that always <laughs> makes me laugh so hard to think that. So if yeah, if anybody if you go back and watch one of these, top 30 was like one of the big sponsors for the for yeah. the streams, and it's the corniest. Like it feels like like this was 10 years ago, but the ad feels like it's like 30 years ago in terms of not just the quality but also like the attitude of it. Um, oh. Yeah, just top 30. Something leaders in the world anyway yeah that always makes me laugh whenever i see that ad yeah. yeah um big other big winners uh well i like this is an overwrought point at this point but stasi Gejo is super fun to listen to i don't like she is a great argument for like please find another co-commentator and then for 10 minutes at the start of the event and 10 minutes at the end just have a round table of people like Stasia where they they're full of anecdotes full of excellent analysis just give them a chance to have a conversation because I think you know Matt would probably go a different direction or whoever is commentating would probably go a different direction at certain points in the comp than where she took it but it would be nice just to put a focus on someone like Stasia where she can just point to a certain clip and give us really well spoken and charismatic an, uh, analysis um history of the athletes of the wall like that that those segments were great and i just wish it didn't happen to have to happen over the live climbing i wish we could have opened with her and someone else and just build yeah. up the event and then close with that same thing like she's she uh, she is extremely talented and we'll have to have her on over the winter during the during the comp lull to uh to have her on for one of the uh um uh what do you call it? The off season uh, debriefs for sure. But uh, yeah, so she was really fun, it, but it did make me want to have uh, an analyst desk for sure. She was my, she was my other winner. And if it's funny because if you look at the YouTube comments for the finals, cron final live stream, it's, it's just like all the comments are praising Stasha <laughs> and rightly so. Um, I, without, you know, picking on people in particular I, I just in general some of them do it well but in general i am not usually a fan of 
competitors who are active on the circuit being brought into the booth to do commentary. Mm -hmm. And 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 like I said, some of them are great about uh, are, are very good at it. But in general, I think that that kind of um, I, I don't want it undersells the the fact that to be a good like to be a commentator, it is a, a it's like a skill. It's it's part skill. It's part art form. Yeah, you have to work at it. People people it's spend not, their careers not... trying to improve at it. It's not something you can just like pull someone in and be like, hey, do this and you, and it'll be fine. Yeah. You're not you're not just the like the interview subject where you just like sit there like a potted plant and then the commentator just asks you a question and you're like, yeah, the crimp looks hard, but I think she will do it. Like, it, you know, it, that's yeah, not that's not the job, right? Right. It takes skill. It takes time to get good at it. Uh, it takes talent and it takes dedication, all that stuff. And it's not and to, and to just think that you can just pull somebody in to do it, um, I think kind of just. I, yeah, like it undersells the 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 fact that you really want a professional in that role, and and yet Stasha is kind of one of those rare examples of somebody. And there, are, like I said, there are a couple others that are great at it, but Stasha is certainly one that that rare exception where she is she's fantastic. And I I wrote down how many competitors could actually gain fans at an event without even competing. <laughs> Think about that for a second, you know? Yeah, um, sure. And and yet she she did. I think the thing that I think is so great about her commentary is she can effortlessly go back and forth between just kind of pure f fandom, ex exclamations, right? Like she would say, oh, this is so insane. Like, look at this. She can really kind of dial it up like that. And then she can, in the next breath, talk really intelligently about technical things, right? Whether it's like a, a climbing move or whether it's, she was talking about like muscle groups and stuff like that. Obviously she knows her stuff from a, from a, like a physiological level because she, she, she's because of her training and also from her injury and all that stuff. So, so it's great that she can kind of fill both of those roles. Um, and she just had so many little nuggets I loved. She she said, like, if you're good in Japan, you'll be good at World Cups. I was like, that's <laughs> like that's like a great little phrase to remember. She also said, like, oh, when the panic kicks in, you stop thinking rationally. She just had like all these little nuggets like that that I was mm -hmm. like, man, somebody should be like collecting Stasha's comp uh, commentary wisdom here into like a little uh you know, a little word file or something. So um, she, just awesome. She, yeah, she did a great job of being concise and being very clear. And uh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what else to add to it. But she, she did a good job. And I'm, I'm not gonna wish anybody retires from competitive climbing just to go into broadcasting. But I hope, and this has been said by a ton of other people. I hope she gets the opportunity to do that more. Um, and uh, yeah, ideally get paid well to do it. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, not because again, I, I'm, I'm very iffy about somebody like that being a commentator because i think there is a better kind of person that you can have filling that role frankly um but if we have to deal with the you know one play-by-play -play and one caller commentator then she would be pretty good at it so yeah well well have her follow the megan martin route right which is you you are a competitor on the circuit for years and then the commentary which you have a talent for mm -hmm. that becomes something that you can you can um your career after you retire or, or not to say, I don't think Megan Martin's like fully retired. I don't know, but she doesn't, you know, she doesn't do world cups and stuff anymore. Yeah. And, and she's the full time like USA climbing, uh, commentator, co-commentator. And that'd be great for Stasha to do something like that for the IFSC. If 100%. possible. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Did you have any other winners or did you say that was it for you? That was it. Yeah. Stasha was my other one. So, yeah. um, move on to the losers yeah on to the, on to the losers all right like i said uh so my winner was stefano gazolfi and my loser is stefano gazolfi as well as sean bailey and sasha layman and i'm mostly just mad at them for garbage showing in semifinals meaning that somehow some like the worst case like okay to, to set the stage i always bitch that we don't put enough uh, emphasis and gravitas behind winning a season, right? Like to me, that is the biggest accomplishment. I do think that is better than winning a world championship, but we shoehorn the podium for the season into the end of the last world cup after everybody's tuned out. Um, and it has no bigger fanfare than the podium for winning the event, even though it is, is in my opinion, a much more prestigious, uh, uh, victory. 
So imagine my my complete disappointment where the three there were and there were only three guys in contention for for the podium, right? It was Stefano, Sean Bailey, and uh, and uh, Sasha Lehman, and they all drop out in semifinals. So we're not going to see any of them in finals. But the points that they earn in semis locks their places basically, or at least locks Stefano's. We knew Stefano was going to yeah. get gold. The other two might have shuffled. Uh, depending on how other things went, if I remember right, um, well, d- didn't Masahiro get third for the overall lead? Did he? I thought I thought uh, Sean. Uh, I thought Sean still beat him. Let's take a, maybe let's, maybe let's take a quick research break before I absolutely wreck myself by talking about stuff I don't know for certain. Let me do a quick. Uh, Quick little check here, and yeah, I wrecked myself already. Uh, yeah, so let me take back everything I just said. Oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, but the big thing is like Stefano Gazolfi and Sean Bailey had a huge season, and in third place is Masahiro Higuchi, not Sasha Lehman. My bad. Um, Pre calculated that too early, apparently. That's what happens when you don't know who's gonna who's gonna win finals, and you're like you're barely checked in. Um, and an and, and indictment by itself was that I like didn't even bother to check. Um, but anyway, it was really unfortunate that those big names, really the only big names left in the comp that had been relevant for the season, couldn't make finals in this one particular event. And that made me really sad. Um, mm-hmm. So that storyline kind of gets cut off right at the end. Whereas with Yanya's climb right down to the end of it, like, is she going to win the event and the season or not? What's going to happen? That was a really cool uh, storyline to have even though the commentators were cautious about about um, kind of breaking down that math which is fair um, but yeah and the other biggest loser is myself for not even double checking the ranks before we started recording this and claiming that Sasha Lehman got bronze That's you okay. win some I, you lose some baby it, it's so uh, <laughs> this kind of leads into my my one of my losers that I was going to get into last but I, I think we'll bring it up first so the methodology for the determining the lead overall season or any overall season is what do you want me to like yeah 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 because i I'm, oh, i'll just, explain in a sec do you want me to give like the the points breakdown or what's the how do they do it okay so the season is divided up into like in this case it was supposed to be six world cups but it only ended up being five and based on your placing at each world cup you're assigned a certain number of points so for example if i'm getting this right first place is 100 points second place is 80 third is 65 and the points you get for each event diminish uh, as you get lower through the event and then the season is basically adding all of those points together um, although you minus an event if there are six or more World Cups, I believe is the rule. Because, yeah, this season we didn't do any subtraction yes. um, because there were only five. Normally, if there are six or more World Cups, you only use the top. Anyway, you would have subtracted one. I'll stop right there. No, so this is good because that's the magic word. I wanted you to say addition because uh, th- so it's interesting that adding is deemed a, a good um calculus or i don't know what you'd say good is is a good me- method addition is the good method for dis- determining the lead the the overall season champion and yet it wasn't a good enough metric for the combined discipline in the olympics <laughs> right because we talked about like why didn't they just add why didn't they just add a person's place in all the disciplines to get to get their final score why did they do the multiplication thing mm-hmm. this will make sense in a second because okay for me that that's all just kind of preamble. What I want to say is, I, I, I my biggest loser is the methodology for determining the overall champion for us for the overall um, or or just the overall places for for everybody. Sure. Not, maybe not just the champion, but because here's why: this is kind of opening a can of worms. But no better time than you know, <laughs> forty three minutes into a podcast yes. that nobody's gonna watch. Let's do it. So. I wrote my notes here. Uh, so so in theory, I feel like this is just like we were doing with the Olympics. We're like, in theory, the combined discipline, you're finding the best competition climb, whatever. In theory, isn't the the overall um, season title, you're deciding who was the best, who had the best year or who had the better season, the best season? Is, just, I mean, isn't I'm that I'm writing like, down on the back of an envelope what I think your point's going to be so that when I'm right, I can hold it up. Just give me one second. <laughs> keep, keep going. Well, 
I, I, I want to. Isn't that? I mean, can we agree there? Can we agree that that is in theory what the 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 overall title is determining? Who had who had the best season? Yeah, a hundred percent. Um. So let me ask you this. And question. you can decide what best means, but yeah, I agree. Yeah, but let me ask you this question then. If if I said to you, Tyler, you, I'm gonna I'm gonna award you some some places in a competition or a, for a season. I mean, you can either have two silver medals and a gold, or you can have two golds and a fourth place. Which would you rather choose? Two silvers and a gold, or or two golds. Well, now, uh, now uh, so my, my, this is a. I'll give you a, a reason that it's half a joke, but frankly, wearing three medals is way cooler than wearing two, in my opinion. But okay, no. so we're dancing around this. Here's my thinking. <laughs> and I, think, and I don't want to take anything away. If, I, we had to say this with Alberto when he won the Olympics too. I don't want to take anything away from the from how this season shook out. Good yeah. for everybody for for winning, for getting second place, third place, all that stuff. I'm happy for all of them. But you, if you win the most gold medals, right? That is a better season than somebody who won less gold medals, right? On the face so, of it, I agree. Yeah. So how can you have somebody who wins a couple gold medals not be deemed a better overall season than somebody who wins like only one gold medal? Now I know. Again, you said that like all the places are adding up, all mm -hmm. all the different. Yeah, but like. Look at it logically. Would you rather who is the better climber? The person that holds two golds or the person who holds one gold? Well, no, because like it's not it's not about just the events that you win medals at, right? Like you have to like, well, okay, at the other event, how much worse was this person than this guy, or how much better? And I think it's just like that's just what happens. I, I think my my thesis here is that in the overall season methodology the yeah. gold medal a gold a gold medal right. should be given way more weight than so it should be treated like a top whereas anything else should be treated like an attempt to top by <laughs> <laughs> but but does this does this uh is this kind of what what you're getting at does uh does multiplication by any chance make sean bailey win the season <laughs> i don't i don't know i did not do, <laughs> i did not do that and i and i realized as i, I look I would be I would be making this point regardless of how the places shook out, who was in first, second, or third. Um, and again, I think I'm happy for Stefano. I don't want to take anything away from him. Um, I just think, yeah, in the over I wrote in the overall rankings, gold should carry way more weight than than anything else in calculation because the layperson on the street looks at anybody that has the most gold medals and would say, yeah, that person clearly had a better season than somebody who has less gold medals. And I, I don't disagree with you, but and it, the thing is it does carry the most weight, right? Like the biggest point difference is between silver and gold, right? And maybe, it, I mean, maybe it's not enough. Maybe you want it to be a 25 point difference or, you know, uh, a 30 point difference rather than just the 20 at the moment. I, I don't disagree necessarily. Um, if I, I have two I, gold I, medals, it would be arbitrary regardless, but I'll, okay. I'll, I'll agree with you medals, that Sean Bailey will, one. Sean Bailey will look way more blinging walking into the club with his two gold medals if you want. Although I do think three is a better number than two. Um, just for fashion's sake, it just like evens out better. You know, it centers a little nicer. Sure. Sure. Yeah. But, you get the symmetry. I, I get it. Yeah. I, I, it's just, it's weird to me. And I'm not even sure if I agree with, with this, to be honest. It's just like it's it's in my head. Like, I can't help but think it. You look at somebody that has a couple golds and you look at somebody that has one gold and you're like, well, the person that had a couple had the again, going back to what the overall title should mean. The person who has more gold medals had the better overall season. But I so the only argument I can make and I didn't I'm not checking the numbers right now, but what like what are the crappier results? Right. Like if if. They, if the two athletes you're comparing competed at all the same events and somebody wins two golds, but they bottom out in the other events, which perhaps there's an American lead climber that's occasionally known to bottom out in, uh, in events, I think that's also relevant. Like, yeah, you got two golds, but you also possibly crap the bed the rest of it, whereas someone else wins one gold but is far more consistent then you just got to swallow it like you know and again it was a narrow season it was super close right like it was 40 points between the two between like first and second so you know well, yeah, but even in that example let's have let's say somebody gets two gold medals and they get 
let's just make it easy and and let's make it hypothetical so it doesn't sound like we're picking on anybody. Okay. Let's say a person <laughs> wins two gold medals and and gets like dead last in every other comp. Right. Right. Another competitor, if they get one gold, it doesn't matter to me. I'm thinking, what else? However, else they do, they could have bronze, fourth place, fifth place, and one gold. The person that gets the two gold, two golds is still a better season than one gold. I period. do. Have, I have to disagree with that because if you take it all the way out to the first, let's let's say it's a five, let's say it's a five event season. If you get first, first, one hundredth, one hundredth, one hundredth, and the other guy gets first, second, second, tenth, tenth. I'm sorry, but I got to pick the guy that was in the top 10 for the five events and not the other guy that bottomed out, right? I have to disagree at, like on that example for sure. He's still the, 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 I'd still rather be the guy that's got two gold medals. I think you'll look swagging, but you know that, <laughs> that won't get you a world season championship or whatever the shit we call this. So sorry, dude. <laughs> that's just how it goes. Okay. I Yeah. I think so. I think historically, I think that that is an interesting thing because I think gold medals, like the way people have been talking about Yanya Garnbretz, she got 31 medals, you know, that's more than anybody else has, let alone, you know, not really acknowledging that, yeah, Jane Kim won basically all of those in lead. Like, you want to tell me that, you know, Yanya Garnbretz is a more celebrated lead climber? Like, just go, go away. Like, she hasn't done that yet. Um, people do count gold medals for sure. I think that'll be something that Sean will be able to wear um and and is important but i think for this particular accolade to win a season i i don't think that's in my opinion but, i don't but again, think that's if appropriate if, if, if we're going back to this idea of we're, we're determining who the best is right yes. let's say you have somebody who has <laughs> we're getting so into the weeds with hypotheticals here but, I, but all, like, all i'm like all somebody, i'm trying okay. to like no let me let me stop like how you know you're, you're it's kind of suggesting that two gold medals regardless of what your other achievements is is better than is better than one gold medal you know i it feels like you're willing to subtract a lot of information that is relevant um and and i'm not sure that's fair like if you're a climber that has an extremely you know up and down type of performance you might end up with Actually, a, a good example are let's talk about some seasons where somebody wins three medals or three golds where somebody else wins four. But the person that won four medals had terrible results in the other events. And the person that won three gold medals had very consistent results. Like, what's the difference between three gold medals and four gold medals? Like, if it is really, you know, if you won a single gold medal more than somebody else that you had a better season, like, I, I just don't think it holds up. I, I I don't know if it does or not. I'm not quick to dismiss it. I'll say that because if you look at, again, take yourself out of the, the sort of analytical equation and just look at it. I don't want to say like on the obvious level, but it's like, okay, this person has four this season. This person has three who had the better season. Mm -hmm. Again, like, let's not think about like, oh, well, this like, don't get deep into it. Just look at it from an obvious I'm, perspective. I the will... person who has four is had a better season. They, I, they have four gold medals. Is here's what I'll give you. Medals. Here's what I'll give you. They had a more okay. decorated. They had a more decorated season. I'll give you that 100 percent because they earned more medals. And if you're trying to collect medals, I'll 100 percent give you that. You 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 are the most decorated for sure. But like, it, I don't think it would be weird for in a men's World Cup season for each event to be won by a different person and each event to be silvered by a different person and each event to be bronzed by a different person. So you have a, a six way tie where everybody won a, a gold, silver and bronze. You know, mm -hmm. how are you going to break that tie? Well, there are other events should be relevant because you're saying like what you're talking about. I think talking about it in a, in a sense of the most decorated makes sense, but it does ignore the events that you either didn't go to or the events that you did worse in which obviously the season's trying to acknowledge. So, yeah. yeah. I think you should you should go into the you should redo all of the season uh all the season podiums and redo them based on medal count. And just I would love to see what that looks like actually, where you just like have the most decorated climbers from all the seasons and see if it's much different from what it actually is. Yeah, or if you do some sort of multiplication uh instead of just adding up or something. Yeah. I don't I don't know. And again, I'm not I mean, it sounds like I'm arguing passionately for this. I'm not. I'm just, I like to kind of think of, is this the best way? Just like we did, like I said, with the Olympics combined. Like, is that the best format? I'm thinking here, is this the best way for determining the overall best of a season? Just to, I don't know. 
I don't know. I, I think that's re- like I think there's a bunch of other sports that do approximately the same thing, and it's like I mean it it always comes close. And any like they, that is the one thing I'll give you. It is an arbitrary system, so you could make the difference bigger by one point or two points each direction. And some seasons it'll matter, and some seasons it won't. But it's just like what we have. But I don't know. I'm I'm just happy to know that this is a Sean Bailey shaped hill that you are willing to die on for sure. <laughs> it is. Like I said, it's not it's not pertaining to and, and, and in all seriousness, I don't want it to be framed that way because no. I don't want to act like I'm taking anything away from Stefano. I'm just yeah. it's just, you know, yeah, most decorated. But like, isn't that a pretty darn good metric for best? Well, it <laughs> like, can't. And here's the thing, like and this is something that I think everybody should talk about, especially since Yanni Garnbred is being crowned some weird title of greatest competitor of all climbing time or whatever guess what you get to think whatever you want is important right like i don't think that's important i don't think i'm still trying to get my head around it because i don't necessarily disagree that yanya is the most decorated combined multi-discipline climber of all time like if if i say it that way yeah she's won more world cup medals than anybody else it's spread across two disciplines though so she isn't the most decorated boulder competitor of all time she is not the most decorated lead climber of all time so in in my opinion i think being really strong at one discipline is really important and i in my head i think i'm gonna have a hard time saying you're the greatest of all time if you're not even the best at one of them right which yanya currently is not so that's what i decide is important the ifsc's twitter account is telling me i'm a fucking idiot so you know maybe i'm wrong but we all get to decide what we think is important and that's what makes it fun i don't know that's the that's a it's sports ultimately nobody gives a shit and it doesn't matter but yeah, yeah. this is the fun part I mean, it, it it kind of makes sense though that any organization, if they have somebody that's that good, it's to their benefit to to present them as like great, right? Because I agree. that I mean that that because that helps like fans want to kind of tune into that. I think um, I, here's here's what I'll say is I think you could get a lot more traction out of this by saying Yanya Garnbret is becoming a great climber faster than anybody else has at any point in history right and she didn't just stick around for one or two years like some old flash in the pan athletes did this climber is like foot on the gas and she is going for greatness watch her next event watch next season where she could become the most decorated boulder of all time you know like it giving her the crown already especially and i've already mentioned this but you know the history is very blurry so a lot of people don't know what they're comparing it to but i wouldn't be giving up the the debate already and just crowning somebody i'd be saying who do you think is the greatest of all time like sandrine levey is also kicking ass at both of them and jane kim has fewer medals now by one but she did all of them in lead so do you think you know that yanya is really the best lead climber of all time just because she's you know like one about half of as many as as uh kim jane is one like i wouldn't be i wouldn't be selling it so hard that this is done and dusted because i do think it's in their interest to keep driving the story of like, this isn't settled yet. Right. And the climbers that she's competing against are still, you know, they're still, they're still alive. This isn't baseball where we've got like a century worth of history and you're comparing some like guy now to Babe Ruth, who's been in the ground for, I don't even know how many decades, like everybody's still kicking for the most part. We can get Sandrine LeVay out for an interview and say, no, Yanya's shit. I was better. Like that would be amazing if we could ever get something like that so i don't i don't yeah. think the ifsc should be leaning into it being such a a cut and dried thing i think it would be in their interest to get people talking about stuff yeah i i co-sign that i think the money's always in the chase right like that that's a fantastic that's a great way to narrative. put it yeah um that's a fantastic narrative she's chasing she's chasing greatness um yeah, and if you can get San- Sandrine LeVay to get in an interview and talk God, smack. God, I hope Sandrine LeVay is just some super salty just person. So, man, how great would that be if one of, or her, like Muriel Sarkany or one of these people yeah. that has like won a butt ton of seasons or something. Just, you know, Robin Urbisfeld, get one of them drunk and have a have a microphone put. There was like, we you and I shot back uh, screenshots from a, a client, like a, a copy of Climbing Way Back where it would have been Robin Urbisfeld, and I'm trying to think who it would have been that she was competing against in those days. But there was a season where Robin wasn't certain to win the championship, the lead season. Um, and just, uh, who was it? I can pull this up real quick. 
Um, yeah, I don't know off the top of my head. It could have been Susie Good, maybe. It, it, um, it, no, it was. Uh, I can I can find this so super fast. Um, it would have been. Uh, it was it Laurence Guillon. Maybe it was Laurence Guillon at that point. Um, but anyway, you had this this French climber coming up that was killing it, and mm-hmm. and Robin might for the first time in a few years not win the season, and then she does, and and Robin has a great quote in the magazine where she's just like kind of lets loose a little bit, and it's just like oh I wish we had more of that where you're just like basically Robin was like don't mess with the queen right like yeah. you thought I was done like no chance like sit back down there's a reason I won the last three world championships and there's a reason I won this one as well like give me yeah. more of that come on. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what the, oddly enough, this goes this goes into have someone like Stasha who can be kind of like a sideline reporter, I guess, mm-hmm. like to kind of get these insights with the competitors before the comp, after the comp, beyond just, you know, hey, you just won. Like, how do you feel? Right. Like you get that sound bite. Like, yeah, bring in bring in the personality a little bit more. Try and work to get some kind of response to to mm-hmm. questions like that yeah that'd be great yeah be awesome it would be cool where did did we both do our biggest losers i can't remember if we uh... yeah well you so your loser was the the the, the podium boys, basically yeah. yeah and mine was just like the the methodology to me seems um maybe maybe room for improvement yeah um uh, yeah if you have another loser go for it though the, I, I was going to mention it briefly. I don't have a screenshot, so it's not entirely worth you know putting up. But because I feel like we haven't roasted root setting in, in, in an entire month, so we better get back to it. The men's, the crux, the low crux on the men's final was a bit disappointing. It does suck when the conversation literally on air is about short people might be at a disadvantage doing this move. Like that sucks. That's no, no root setter wants that conversation. And I'm sure there are ways they could do it, but it was clearly much more difficult uh, to get through that red, like uh, uh, there was the big rail and going out to the right. Um, so yeah, that was kind of a bummer. Yeah. That, that's a good one. I, I, another one I wrote down, I don't know how you would phrase who the loser is here, but I, I wanted to see more Olympians there. Uh, like we were saying at the beginning of this debrief, it's it was no surprise that there weren't a lot of Olympians there. We kind of knew that that would probably be, be the case. But, you know, Yanya was there. I mean, it was in her home, but Yanya was there. Cheon, so props to Cheon for, for attending this comp after the Olympics. But there was no Andra, no Magos, no Jakob, no Alberto uh nathaniel coleman colin duffy um there's just i mean there was so many olympians weren't there it's too bad because i'm sure there were some people tuning in that learned about the comp circuit the comp scene from the olympics um probably wanted to see some of those big names those familiar names at least they still got to see yanya do great things Mm -hmm. um the kind of the biggest name from the olympics but yeah, it's too bad. I just I wanted to cheer for him. I wanted to cheer for the Olympians, see how they would be after after the Olympics. Yeah, okay, let's uh, just very briefly, just to bring it back to Chayun. Like the last time we saw her competing would have been uh, like 2019, right? And I'm pretty sure, like she came second at this event. When we talk about Yanya being awesome, like Chayun's competed only in like just over a season worth of World Cups, and her worst result is still fourth. Right. Yeah. So that's very Yanya esque in terms of a very high floor for her performances. Um, and we've mostly missed her because of maybe the Olympics, but probably mostly because of COVID during this last season. So I'm so psyched for next season. If, if things calm down and we get to see the Korean team out at more things like she's like talk about an impressive first season. Right. And then now showing no signs of stopping her lead performances are still extraordinary um so i really hope we can flesh that out because this this is kind of another fun point talking about the yanya garnbrett story is she is now transitioning out of her early years and moving into the later half probably of her career just going by the average length of a climber's career so Mm -hmm. how do you hold up when all the young kids start showing up when the orianne and natalia and shayun all these kids start coming onto the scene. Do you hold up as well as as someone like Jane Kim did? Do you hold up as well as uh, Romain de Grange? Like, can you can you stay in the mix, or or does it become way harder? And can you keep up that fight 
when there are kids that uh, that really want to kick your ass and take the gold from you. So it's only going to get more interesting. Yeah, probably maybe a different discipline if you're talking about Yanya, you know, winning lead overall, and then but in bouldering, Akio would be the biggest example of just yes. somebody who, yeah, yeah. who phenomenally not only climbed into what would be considered old years for a comp climber, but also like never had a major injury that I know of, mm-hmm. um, you know, and certainly nothing that was debilitating uh, in terms of like a, an entire season or anything like that. Yeah. So um, we'll see. I mean, it's, it's, it's odd to think of Yanya <laughs> as like old cause she's not old at all, but I would, I would say she's mid career, but if you have to divide it in two, she's done the early years. Like those are over. Guess what? You're yes. now, you're in the average like older years. So yeah, which would be, which, which would, I mean, if you're thinking about other sports, like this would be now she's entering her prime years, right? But because Maybe, like yeah. you think you have this the 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 rookie season, uh, you, you know, you might have kind of the talent, but you don't have like the the I don't know what you'd say, like long wisdom that has mm-hmm. been gained from years on the circuit. Yeah. And once you're 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 done with those the few rookie seasons, you you have some of that wisdom, you still have that talent, and you can kind of put it all together. Yeah. And you're st- certainly still in your physical peak. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't want to suggest that I think Yanya's in her diminishing years. I just want to say, just no, in terms of not. timeline, she's in the later half. Whether or not she diminishes yeah. or improves is totally up to her. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So. It, it's an interesting question uh, or an interesting observation because I think it's pretty accurate. Yeah, and um, and and you know, going forward, next season, season after that, yeah, there's going to be more 18 year olds, 19 year olds. Um, those 18 year olds, they're always going to be coming up and, and, you know, Yanya is going to just be getting one year older each, each season. And so it's going to be really interesting to see, yeah, how she, how she holds up. So, yeah, yeah, totally. Do you have anything else you want to add to this, uh, to this episode or or do you want to wrap it? Um, so I was, this is, I mean, we've kind of been going high level stuff, so this feels I, for a loser, I was just bummed for Natsuki Tani's the way she yeah. she exited. She her knee bumped her hand, which mm-hmm. was just kind of such a a fluke thing. Um, and she ended up finish she finished last in the finals. Um, she, her highest place this lead season was fifth at Chamonix, and it felt like, gosh, I don't know. She looked pretty solid. Like I wonder if she could have gotten better at fifth, th- better than fifth place here. Maybe gotten a season high. Uh, ranking for a for a lead comp it was just it was just it, just how it happened like it was like a foot slip is one thing and that's unfortunate yeah. in its own right but to have your knee bump your hand it's just like that's such a quirky way to go out so too bad i'm, for I'm not really sure what her training calendar has been like but the stuff we've heard behind the scenes is kind of that she was kind of out of the game sort of uh last year and so i'm not sure how that's affected her um, but yeah, maybe next year when the season's a bit more consistent, we'll see if she's adapted uh, mm-hmm. a little bit more and maybe seems a bit more on the, on the kind of performance that we saw glimpses of in 2019. Cause she was one of those names, um, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And I was happy for, uh, speaking of kind of low exits, I was happy that Laura ended up, Laura Regora ended up with a good season overall standing because she, she had a low slip here at Kron in the finals. She was clearly frustrated. And on top of that, they said, that, I mean, she was frustrated with her Olympic performance too, mm-hmm. um, and and we saw that on the Olympic broadcast. She was visibly frustrated and stuff. So it, I think it's been kind of a rough f- four weeks for Laura comp wise, um, which was sad to see. So it was just great that she, you know, she came away from it at least with a great kind of overall standing. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I, I didn't see if she was registered for uh, for the. World Championships um, starting up this week, but I guess we'll find out in the next couple of days when we actually take a look at it. But maybe we should just wrap it there. It's been a, it's been a pretty good lead season. Um, better, like I said, than I expected, given the Olympics soaking up a lot of the talent. Um, but yeah, it was let, fun. It was a good. Let one. me ask you a question real fast. What's your lasting memory of this lead season? When I say like when I say like 2021 lead season, go. What like comes to your mind first? Oh shit. So this is dumb, but immediately the first thing is actually the fog in Vilar, <laughs> which is like not at all relevant. Damn, yeah. that's a that's a really good question. It, it is hard because the recency bias is obviously yeah. Yanya Garnbrett from uh, from last week. I'm trying to think if there's anything that's like really jumping out at me off the top of my head without like looking at the results at all. 
Um, yeah, no. Yeah, What's the what prompted what like what uh what would you say? Yeah, I don't know. Like I just um honestly like Yanya being told that she won lead overall and not even realizing it that, like that's that, probably a clip that we'll live with for a while eh? yeah. yeah that's big sean bailey's victories mm-hmm. were big because i mean they were just pretty rousing we had tyson shaney in the discord and stuff which was cool his coach yeah. um but yeah i don't know i'd have to really think about it I, I i don't know what would come to mind beyond like the recent like you said the recency by by bias of the cron stuff mm-hmm. i don't know but yeah be fun for the viewers to all kind of think of the same question. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let us know in the comments. Exactly. Yeah. What that's... comes to mind when you think of the 2021 lead season? We still have two more events to cover. So we're going to, we'll do a debrief after the world championships and we'll do one after the Seoul uh, Boulder speed event, which will be the final uh, event for both bouldering and speed. Uh, and then after that, we'll go into our postseason, which will probably be maybe a debrief a, a debrief a month or something like that. But we've still got a couple more to go. So yeah, in the comments, leave what it, what are you, what is your lasting memory from the 2021 lead season? And uh, of course, uh, just any other comments that you want John to see and me to see sometime next year when I actually read the <laughs> read the comments a year later. Uh, thank you very much for watching. As always, I'm Tyler Norton and uh, John Bergman. Um, what else do I say at the end of these shows? What's the? It's been a while. Oh yeah. You say uh, you thanks can... to the sponsor. Thanks to you have some... <laughs> the sponsors. The, 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 thanks to the. Um, you thank people. Yeah. You... Right. Thank. Okay. So anyway, if you'd like to support uh, Plastic Weekly, you can go to the Patreon uh, link in the thing below, where you can uh, get stickers, you can ask questions, or if you are good at wasting money, you can actually be on a show like this. You can join the show. Even if you have nothing to offer, I'll still put you in a little square and put you on YouTube. Um, what else? Uh, um, Instagram. Oh, yeah, the Discord. Join us at the Plastic Weekly Discord if you lasted this yeah. long watching this. Uh, join our little community of people that enjoy talking about competition climbing, uh, whether it's the statistical side or the movement side. We just like talking about climbing, so you can come hang out with us there. Otherwise, make sure you click the subscribe button for the remaining episodes of the season. And uh, as always, uh, we will see you in the next one. Uh, so see you after World Championships. Where's the stop button? I can't even remember. Where's my cursor right now?